Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Let's explore four of the best business books for new entrepreneurs. Whether you're starting a brand new business, maybe you're thinking of starting a new business, or maybe you recently started a new business, these are four books that I strongly recommend that you read to increase your odds for long-term success. Now, whenever I put a list like this together, Typically, I'll include up to seven books, and there might be one or two books that are somewhat optional, and they might appeal to some readers as opposed to others. But because I know you're starting a new business, and you're probably very busy, I wanted to focus on just the must-read four books that I think would have the greatest impact for you. And when it comes to the order that you should go through these in, I tried to play around with the order a little bit and I quickly realized all four of these books are books that you should read as early in the process as possible. So while I certainly wouldn't recommend that you slow down your business or that you take a break or anything like that, keep working on your business, but I do recommend that you read these books, all four of them, as soon as possible, and there isn't necessarily an order here. So as you go through this video, if one of the books really appeals to you or seems to fill in a clear gap or something that you might be struggling with, then start there, but be sure you come back to the list and go through all four books because each one covers a very unique perspective when it comes to operating a business or starting a new business, and you really wanna make sure that you get all of this information so you have the best possible chances for success. So with that in mind, let's jump into book number one, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. One of the biggest challenges in business, especially when you're brand new to business, is communicating exactly what it is that you do for customers, who you are, what you do, and how you can help. And not only is this really important when it comes to actually communicating with and attracting customers to your business, but it's also just as important when it comes to your own internal clarity as a business. So whether it's just you, whether you have a small team, it's really important that you get very, very clear on exactly what it is that you do to help customers. And of course, that is obviously that much more valuable when it comes to actually communicating with customers, but just being clear internally, because there's this very common issue that businesses face, especially early on, where they dabble with a few different ways to create value for customers. They might spread themselves too thin, or they might focus on things that aren't actually that important to building long-term momentum with customers. And so with all of that in mind, you wanna get really clear internally about who you are, what you do, and how you can help customers, and you wanna find effective ways to communicate communicate that to your customers. And this isn't just to close the sale. The other aspect of this is the more clarity that people have about exactly what it is that you do, the easier it is for them to refer or recommend your brand to other people. So even if they aren't in a position to take advantage of your products, the easier it is for them to quickly digest and have clarity about what exactly it is that you do, the more likely it is that when they're sitting down with a friend or a family member or an acquaintance and someone brings up in conversation, that they have a need for a product or service like yours, the more likely it is that that person is gonna remember you, remember what it is that you do, and to be able to make that connection. Whereas if they only have a vague sense of what you do, that kind of connection may never happen. So this is as much about internal clarity, communicating with customers, and with making sure that customers have a clear sense of what you do so they can recommend it to other people as well. Now, there are a lot of really great books out there on this subject to do with brand communication and clarifying to people what it is that you do. This is one of my favorites because it has such a simple and approachable framework. It uses the story brand framework, the simple tried and true pattern that makes up stories in movies, in books, in TV shows, a very classic framework for communicating the challenge of the customer, the opportunity that they have, how you can step in as a guide to resolve their problems. It's a very simple yet powerful framework to tell your story, to communicate what it is that you do for people and how they can benefit from it. So one of the most, most important books for new entrepreneurs and one that I highly recommend that you pick up and go through carefully. Next on the list is Traction by Gabriel Weinberg and Justin Mares. This is likely my single most recommended book when it comes to brand new companies, brand new startups, especially when they're overly focused on building out their product and service. And the reason for this is that the number one reason why so many businesses fail the single biggest cause for failure is a lack of customers. 
Most businesses are able to put together a product, to put together a service, whatever it is that they're offering to customers. They're able to build something out. They're able to bring it to market successfully. They come up with their brand, their website, their product, their service, whatever it might be. But the number one challenge that they have is actually attracting and converting prospects into customers. And so, like I said, this is the number one book that I tend to recommend, especially when I recognize, and this is a trap I've fallen into many, many times over the years, when I recognize that people are overly focused on the product side. One of the core things that they recommend in this book really early on is that you split your time 50-50 between everything involved in building the product or the service or coming up with the brand and the other half spent on figuring out your marketing strategy, on attracting potential customers, on getting their feedback early and often, and making sure that you have a game plan for success. Because the last thing that you wanna do is come to the end of this process of building out your product, you have all this enthusiasm, you're happy with what you've built, and then you go to launch it, and it's just crickets. Nobody responds, nobody's interested. Either you can't get in front of the right customers or people simply aren't interested in what you built. Whatever the reason might be, the solution is typically to split your time 50-50 as they recommend in this book, get feedback early and often, and make sure that you have a clear plan for attracting customers. Now, another really important thing that they covered in this book is the bullseye framework, a very simple four-step process for how to identify the best marketing channel for your specific business. So the book happens to cover 19 different marketing channels that you might consider using for your business, but the bullseye framework breaks this down into a simple four-step process when it comes to how to choose the right channel for your business. So the very first step is brainstorming legitimate ideas for all 19 traction channel opportunities. The second step is to select four or five of the most promising, the, the opportunities that seem like the best fit for your business. The third step is to perform inexpensive tests to actually see and to track which of those options is most likely or actually does turn out the best results for your business. And finally, step four is to choose the single best strategy based on your tests to commit your time and energy to that one strategy you don't wanna sp spread your efforts too thin across a bunch of different strategies simultaneously. So this is all about going through these four steps, getting clear on the one best strategy, focusing on that strategy, and eventually returning back to the list and finding the next best marketing opportunity that you can tag on later. So. If you're looking for marketing channels, if you're trying to figure out the best opportunity for your business, I highly recommend that you pick up this book. I also created a video on the YouTube channel that was heavily inspired by this book covering 33 different marketing channels. You might wanna check that out as well if you're looking for additional ideas. You can take those channels and apply the bullseye framework to them as well. But the key idea here is to make sure that at the end of the day, you're attracting customers to your business because failure to do so is the number one reason why new businesses fail. Let's move on to the third book in the list, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing by Al Reese and Jack Trout. This is one of my favorite business strategy books of all time. This one's a classic. First published back in 1994, I believe, so it's 26 years old at this point. But even though many of the examples from the book are dated, at this point, the core ideas, the main lessons in this book are as relevant today as they ever have been. And the key idea behind this book, in my personal opinion, is this idea that if you really wanna be successful, you want to position your business as the leader within a specific category. You wanna help customers make a clear connection between a need that they might have or a product category and your brand as the leader in that space. And it doesn't matter if it's a global category, a niche category, maybe a local category within your region, whatever the situation might be, you wanna find a way to position yourself in the minds of your customers as being the leader the best option within your category. And as they explain in the book, the opening law of the book, in fact, is the law of leadership. It's better to be first than it is to be better. When it comes to forming this connection in the minds of customers, where they think of your brand whenever they think of a certain problem or a category, it's better to be the first one to make that connection with the category and your brand than it is to come along later after the fact and to try to convince people that you have a better solution. So the example that I use often would be fast food 
When you think of fast food, most people, they immediately associate fast food with McDonald's. And the reason is not because McDonald's makes the best food or the healthiest food or even the best solution when it comes to needing fast food. At the end of the day, the reason why McDonald's is the number one brand associated with this category is that they were first into the minds of their target audience. They were the first mainstream brand in the fast food category. And even today, most people that are first introduced to this idea of fast food do so with the brand of McDonald's. So they're in this dominant position in the category. Whenever somebody thinks of fast food, McDonald's effectively lives rent-free in their minds because they immediately think of McDonald's and associate that category with that brand. And the same is true with all kinds of brands out there. You think ride-sharing, Uber, coffee shops, Starbucks, streaming television, Netflix, electric cars, Tesla, we make these connections all the time. It's the way that our brains operate. We like to make associations between things. And when it comes to business, we make these links between specific product or service categories or problems or issues that we might have with specific brands that can resolve them. And again, really important to be the first brand. Now, you may in fact not be the first brand in your category. In fact, there's very high probability that that's the case. The book has a few different opportunities or a few different solutions for that, different ways to go about doing this. I'm not gonna spoil the whole book, but I am gonna recommend, it's a relatively short book, read the book, go through this, understand the power of positioning and having this connection with your brand and the importance of making a very clear connection. Much of this ties back to building a story brand in terms of how you communicate your brand and how you help people make a clear association with what it is that you do. But this book has a really powerful take when it comes to relaying that idea to forming this connection and what to do if you're dealing with a competitor that is already the number one brand in a category and how you can work around that. Just to be clear on one key detail here, it's not enough just to be the very first person to solve a problem. You need to be the first brand that creates this mental association. So if you solve a problem at home in your basement and nobody ever knows about it, well, that doesn't matter. The idea here is to be first in the minds of your target audience, whether that's a global audience, a local audience, a niche audience. You need to establish what it is that you do with that audience so that they think of you when they think of that category. So not just first to, to solve a problem, first to solve it in a way that gets in front of your target audience. Let's move on to the fourth and final book, Contagious by Jonah Berger. Word of mouth is arguably the single most important marketing strategy, especially for consumer facing businesses and even more so for brand new businesses that might not have a big advertising budget. When you're brand new in business, the best thing that you can have going for you is that early customers and even early prospects love what you're doing so much that they recommend it to other people because it effectively allows your business to grow without necessarily having to spend a small fortune on advertising. So this book is all about how to craft products, services, or even ideas that are more likely to naturally spread through word of mouth referral. It covers the six principles of contagiousness, which include social currency, triggers, emotions, public observability, practical value, and stories. So the idea here is each of these principles can be incorporated either individually or in groups to your product or service or even to ideas or content to make it more likely that whatever it is that you're producing will be shared with other people. It increases the odds that people will not only remember and think about what it is that you've created, but also more likely that they will share it with other people. Now, there are a couple misconceptions when it comes to this idea of virality or contagiousness. A lot of people seem to believe that the kinds of products and services, or let's say viral videos that turn into runaway hits, that it's largely just luck. That at the end of the day, nobody really intended to create that video to go viral. And if it did go viral, well, they got lucky, something worked out, the timing was right, you know, something like that. And while there certainly is an element of luck when it comes to massive numbers like 10 million or 100 million plays, and even if you could argue that the person that created that content didn't necessarily anticipate that result, 
The core idea in this book is there are specific things that you can do, these six principles to engineer whatever it is that you're creating to be more likely to find success. So even if somebody got lucky and didn't intend to, they almost certainly unintentionally used these kinds of principles as part of their success. The other big myth that people have out there is that you need this runaway hit in order for it to really be impactful. So if you're gonna go viral, you need that 10 million plays or something like that. And part of this also leads, I think, people to believe that it is difficult to engineer this because not everybody can have a runaway smash hit, right? Just the math doesn't work out. But the fact is you don't need 10 million plays. You don't even need a million plays. If you're going to create, let's say, a product or a service or a piece of content and you can engineer it to reach 10 times more people than it was going to anyway, that can completely transform your business. You don't need 10 million plays. You don't need the product that all of a sudden everybody in the world is buying, you know, the next... I'm trying to think of you know these highly trendy products that all of a sudden take over the marketplace. You don't need to create that result in order to have success. If all you do is make it more likely that the average person is going to recommend it to somebody else and that they're going to recommend it to somebody else, and instead of reaching, let's say, 10,000 customers, you reach 50,000 or 100,000, well, of course, that can completely transform your business. So that's the idea here. It's not necessarily to guarantee you're gonna have this runaway smash global hit. It's that whoever your intended audience is, you wanna make it more likely that they're gonna hear about what you're doing, they're more likely to share it to other people, and you're more likely to benefit from this idea of virality without necessarily needing to have some smash runaway hit. So that's the idea here. And again, in my personal opinion, when it comes to the most successful businesses and products out there, word of mouth marketing is one of the most powerful strategies and is very often the strategy at the end of the day that leads to most of their success. And even if they end up spending money on advertising or other marketing channels, simply making your products and services more viral multiplies all of those other efforts and makes it that much more likely that you're going to be successful. So I highly recommend this book. Let me just quickly recap all four books Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller, Traction by Gabriel Weinberg and Justin Mares, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing by Al Reese and Jack Trout, and finally, Contagious by Jonah Berger. Those are the four books that I recommend that you read first when starting a new business. If you have any questions or comments or thoughts about anything that we covered here, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you're looking for a specific book recommendation for a challenge or an opportunity that you may be facing, let me know down in the comment section below. We can discuss things there and maybe I can make a recommendation for your specific situation. If you're interested in more content like this in the future, I recommend that you subscribe or follow my updates on social media so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching and I look forward to connecting with you again in a future video.